Graham, Neil had said that he thought JT was just off on Saturday, but thought he'd bounce back. So you agree? Do you think he was just off? And is there something you can do to get him back on? You know, I think sometimes you have off days, especially, I mean, at any position. You know what I mean? The hardest part about the quarterback position, in my opinion, is like if you have an off day, <laughs> I mean, one, it's pretty apparent, and two, uh, you don't give yourself so much of a chance to win, you know, and that's, um, you know, when, when that's the case, that's why I've always thought like running the ball or believed in running the ball probably a little more than Coach Lee's just because like there's going to be days where, where that, you know, where you're not playing great. And I can remember plenty of games where when I was playing, we were a little off and the answer was just keep throwing it. So, uh, <laughs> it's going to be a long night. But, uh, you know, and, and I've seen it in coaching and in, as a player. Um, and that's, like I said, when, when that's the case, um, you really need other guys to, to either be able to run the football well or, or other guys step up and kind of get you out of the funk. But, you know, sometimes that happens. And, and uh, like I said, at the quarterback position, it's, it's uh, hard to overcome. You look at them, um, the first area you look at, 200 yards a game, they're giving up on the ground rushing. Why do, why do you see that? What do you see in there that's allowing them to give up that many yards? You know, I think there's a uh, probably a lot of factors that go into that, and, and um, but I think a lot of times, you know, with something like that, it's probably has something to do with still learning and still trying to figure, you know, get the system down completely. Um, you know, I wasn't here last year, so I don't know exactly what they did last year. But um, when you make an overhaul and and uh, you know, you got a whole new staff and you're probably putting in a whole new scheme and a whole new terminology, um, that doesn't just happen overnight. You know, it, I mean. From a from a terminology standpoint, it's like learning a new language, you know. And and from from a scheme standpoint, um, you know, depending on what you're trying to do, like it could be completely new techniques, and you could be playing in spots you aren't used to playing. And so I think that um, as a unit, when when you got 11 guys that all are dependent on each other, like if you're not, um, if you, if you don't have it down pat, like sometimes things happen like that, you know. And uh, but I know, you know, Coach Venable has been a really good coach for a long time, and and so you know, I don't think I think in time he he'll get that thing going and and play some really good defense. I just think, like I said, there's a learning curve to everything. You said it uh, skewed a little bit with TCU in Texas, and he's kind of focused on the games after that. Thinks it maybe have simplified some things and not maybe done as much. Do you see that? They've simplified some things, and not yeah, yeah, for sure. Just looks like and uh, maybe doing as many things as they were earlier in the year and. Play yeah. a little simpler. Yeah, and you know those Texas game, Texas and TCU games were rough. You know, I mean, and uh, can skew stats as well. I mean, like when you when you have a big big, uh, when you have a really bad night, it can it can skew stats. So that's not always. That's why I don't think that you know stats are always the most telling thing. Because like I said, you have a really two really bad nights, and and all of a sudden, you've got some numbers that may not be true about what what they really are. You know, and so, um, you know, that's for sure. And and. Uh, so, you you know, they have changed a little bit. You know, they they look a little different since those games. I don't know if, uh, you know, that's the that's the great thing. You never know exactly what you're going to see, but be prepared for whatever you're going to see and give your guys a chance to go execute. You said he wasn't – he didn't like the tempo of the offense on Saturday. How does the tempo kind of get set for an offense? I mean, is it how quickly you get a play call in? Or, I mean, just how does it work? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of different ways that, you know, I think tempo works. Obviously, if you call, like, true tempo plays, you're going to speed up. Um, and then part of it is getting the, getting the play in, and then part of it is the operation of, you know, your guys got to kind of just get lined up and operate, you know. And so uh, I think there's there's a few different factors into, you know, I mean, I mean into the tempo you play with on the offensive side of the ball. Um, you know, we weren't good enough the other night, and, and part of that, like, we were – weren't getting the first first down. I think that's always, you know, we talk about it a lot. If, like, if you can just get that first first down, now you kind of get in a rhythm and you play a little faster. And I think that it's important to get it. And uh, we did a poor job of that the other day. And so, like I said, it kind of kills the, not only the tempo, but the overall, like, uh, flow of kind of offensive execution. And so um, we need to be better. But, but yeah, I think that if you can kind of get get rolling, get a first down or two, all of a sudden the tempo definitely, it, that, that helps it go as well. But, uh, like just as far as how tempo works in an offense, I think mean, it's like I said, there's two or three different faults to it. To that end, is there um, is it easier said than done? I guess to create tempo and pick it up in the middle of a game if you're not having tempo, because we talk with Neil a lot about how 
slow starts to the game, but then what can be done in the middle of a game to try to pick that up? Is it maybe calling more tempo plays, or was that not able to be done because of the way the game was unfolding against Iowa State? I mean, you can call tempo plays anytime. <laughs> like I said, if you get that first first. Do you that, though, if the game just so slow and you're not going anywhere on offense? Or? No, I think, like I said, if you get the first first down, a lot of times that's when people start getting, playing fast, you know. And uh, we did a poor job of that. So we never got, we never really got rolling and got to playing at the speed we probably needed to play. I guess the flip side of tempo is, is if it's not going well, the punt team's out quicker. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, I mean, there's that issue too. Yeah, if you're not getting first down, you're going tempo, your defense can be real mad at you, you know, because uh, they're going to be out there quickly. Right. Uh, but that's why I think, like I said, like a lot of times you'll see it after, you know, after you hit a hit, get a first down, right. boom, all of a sudden you pop into it, jump into it. And really get some rhythm going, and, and uh, you know the other day I think we got some third and very manageables, and didn't execute on the third and very manageables. And if you do, all of a sudden I think you kind of get rolling. And um, I don't know exactly, like I said, the number, but like third and the medium area, like third and longs, is what it is. Like you're, you know, like the percentages always are not going to be great on the offensive side of the ball when you get in third and really long situations. And so I think we, uh, you got to try to stay out of those. And for the you know, when we've played well, we have stayed out of third in really long situations. The other night was kind of an exception to the standpoint of, like, we got in third and very manageables and then it um, didn't execute and get that first down. When in the past we had, been, uh, you know, last or throughout the season, most time in those third and third and medium to shorter ones, we were getting that first down. And, and like I said, uh, if you execute on that, like I said, that, that's the – to me that's the big – you know, third and one – Third and two most of the time, like, yeah, the offense probably has the advantage. It's kind of the three to six to seven where um, it could go either way. And if you're getting those at a high rate, then then you're really going to start rolling. And I thought, you know, a lot of the night we spent in or a lot of our third downs we spent kind of in that third and three to seven range and did a poor job um, converting those where if you do, like I said, I think you can kind of get some momentum and get the thing rolling. Mm -hmm. You said um, you maybe – maybe get lulled into going slower because Iowa State goes so slow. Can the opposite happen where Oklahoma goes so fast that, you know, kind of subconsciously you find yourselves trying to go faster? Yeah, I mean, I guess. I mean, the, the flow of the game can happen. Um, you know, I think that, that uh, Iowa State definitely, I mean, that's their style of football is to play slow and control the, control the clock and try to um, – you know, try to – I mean, if you look at a lot of their games, they're, they're low-scoring games and trying to win low-scoring games, you know. And uh, and Oklahoma State's – I mean, Oklahoma hasn't really been that – I mean, on offense they're trying to they're trying to go as fast as they can and, and score. And, and you know, like I said, if if you can get them three and out, they're off the field in a hurry and you can – and uh, you can get the ball back real fast. But, yeah, I think that the natural flow of the game, um, that definitely happens. But, again, the other night, like I said, if I think if we – if we can kind of, if we could have got rolling, just oh boom, we hit a first down. I think we would, you'd see a faster pace. We just did a poor job, like I said, kind of getting that first one and executing early well, in the drives. The of, uh, Tony, do just speaking on the return of Tony because obviously he wasn't there last game, struggling third down. Justin played well. Justin Johnson. No question. I thought Justin probably played. I mean, if you're just judging individual performances, he probably played better than anyone, you know, and. Uh, um, he didn't have a ton of competition in that category, but he uh, he probably played the best of any of them. And uh, but but having Tony back would definitely help. You know, I think that Tony's a guy that uh, has has quite a bit of experience. He's been here for you know a little bit longer, and and uh, you know he he Tony Tony loves football and enjoys bouncing around, and like I said, it, it brings good energy. Um, so so having him will help in that from that standpoint, and. Um, kind of allow you to, to keep your backs a little more fresh than uh, if you just got one. Now, the other night, like we said, we weren't playing enough plays to really gas them out anyway. Um, but, but uh, you know, when, when, you're, when you're going to the game with, with, uh, at that position, like you're going to get tired every now and then running football. And uh, so to be able to have a guy that – two guys that you feel really good about that have played well all season and, and uh, have, have some experience will definitely help, help, uh, help in everything, not just the run game. I was going to say the run game. But – Tony does a good job, and, and, and uh, J.J. did a good job the other night, too, but has always done a good job. Like, they both do a good job in pass protection, both run the ball well, know what they're supposed to do, and help the offense go. So, so having, you know, getting – if we can get that room a little healthy, that, that, uh, that obviously helps. This defense hunts big plays and is very, very aggressive. How do you uh, 
what, what's your mindset? How do you go into that? How do you uh, get you guys prepared for facing that? You know, I think that, that uh, they do a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? I mean, like, <laughs> if you watch, it's, it, they're, they're, I mean, they can be – I mean, they can give you a million different fronts, it feels like, a million different coverages. They, they uh, Like I said, they, they have a whole lot of calls, and I think a lot of that's kind of to create chaos and try to create the negative yardage plays. And, and um, you know, I think when we play well, we stay we, – we do a good job avoiding negative yardage plays, and I think that's going to be really important. And uh, kind of like I said earlier, like, in third-down situations um, – if you if you take a couple of negative yards plays and you get in third and really long situations, I mean, you're obviously going to try to get it, but but uh, the percentages aren't great for you. Uh, so so I think that it's going to be as important as ever just to communicate well, um, uh, to make sure we're all on the same page because I think that that's the that's the the biggest key to staying out of negative yards plays is is to make sure everyone's kind of seeing and, and on the same page and, and seeing things the same. And so communication is going to be important from that standpoint. And uh, but also you know I think we can. We can move our guys around and kind of move our pieces and try to try to present something different to them to, uh, you know, make them think as well. Because uh, that's the thing, you know, if you got a lot of, if you're doing a whole lot of things, like uh, if you can get them to think a little bit, maybe you can get a get some cheap ones that way too. So, um, you know, things can be a combination of things to, to, but staying out of, staying out of uh, long situations, or staying or avoiding negative yards plays will be important for us. Keep them getting everyone on the same page and then. You know, trying to trying to give them some some stuff to uh, make them uh, have to communicate and see if you know be on the same page as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't know how many details you remember from your playing career against Oklahoma, but too many. The 07 game. <laughs> What's that? The 07 game. Oh yeah. 72 passes. Is that what it was? Yeah. yeah. I think that was the game. Uh, <laughs> we because uh, Coach Leach. I don't know what he, you know, I haven't been with him for the last few years, but he used to, like, tell me he's not going to call a run if, if we're going to run the ball. It's going to be because the quarterback checks it. And about second drive of the game, he, I remember coming off the sideline, he said, hey, uh, we're not going to block these guys, so stop checking the run. <laughs> I'm like, well, we're going to throw it then. Uh, but, yeah, I remember, yeah, the 07 game was a fun game, and then the 08 game wasn't a real fun game, you know. Uh, but, you know, I think the L7 game, that's when I, we threw a pick on the first drive and me and Danny almost fought on the sideline after that. And then uh, we got it together. But, yeah, 07, 07 that, that was a fun game. And uh, went out there, threw it threw it a ton um, and found a way to win. We we knocked Sam out, which probably helped our cause. Uh, not that it's ever good to knock someone out, but <laughs> it helped us that night. Uh, and, uh, you know, that was a fun game. That was a wild – that was – crazy night in Lubbock probably kept them out of the national championship that year and then the next year they beat us with two games left where if we could have found a way to win them we probably get to play in the national championship so it kind of went back and forth you know we each paid each other back I guess but um yeah I remember you know like I said playing them a lot in 06 we went there played really tight gave up a gave up a cheap one at the end of the half which kind of swung the momentum in their way but but played well 07 they came to our place and uh, like you said, we threw it, it felt like every down, and uh, it may have been about every down after the first quarter. But, um, you know, we just thought that gave us the best chance to win because they were uh, – that T-Lyle, I mean, they probably – they still – they've had guys for a long time, but back then they had some some really good players that gave us trouble running the football. And then uh, in 08, they uh, – I can remember in 08, they knew every play we were going to run, I guess – probably because Leach had been in Oklahoma, and I'd signal something, and then the middle linebacker would say, it's 618, which was actually what we called it. And he'd be like, stick, flat, double slants. And you're like, oh, boy, it's going to be a long night tonight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when they're calling it your terminology and telling each route, it's like, nah, this is going to be a long night, boys. But, uh, yeah, like I said, we probably should have changed our signals. Uh, Leach kept the same signal from Oklahoma to Texas Tech to everywhere, and – they're calling the play. That was a long one. But, um, yeah, I remember, like I said, I remember playing them a ton. Played, played up there twice in my starting career. Played it in Lubbock against them once. And uh, always a fun team to play. You know, especially um, in the Big 12 back then, it was always, you know, OU was, was always, um, you, you know, kind of the team to beat at the time or them or Texas. You know, they, they – and it's, you know, a traditionally great program. And – uh and so to play them was always a lot of fun, and and uh, hasn't you know at least at, at at OU there hasn't been a lot changed. They still are really a program and um, a team that that it, at least in my mind is a fun team to play. Like I say, growing up kind of in Big Twelve territory and playing in the Big Twelve, um, OU is always a game that you look forward to playing and uh, want to go play well against those guys. 
Leach ever walk down the sideline and fold up the chairs like he did for the wide receiver <laughs> at Mississippi State because they didn't deserve the stand? Yeah, we didn't even have chairs. We, we, the, he would have flipped the benches back when I was playing. But he, uh, you know, we were talking about Leach stories the other day because I was like, did you see Leach fold up the chairs? I'm like, I've seen Leach do some crazy stuff on game day. I remember we were at Washington State one year and I was up top. We're playing at Oregon early, and I hear, okay, okay, circle up, circle up, and just over the headset, you know. And I'm not really paying attention. I'm like, what's he talking about? Like, he's got him doing up downs on the sideline. <laughs> I'm like, boy, this is, this ain't good. And we came back and won that game. So then that was like the magic trick that year. So anytime like we did something stupid, he'd do up downs on the side. <laughs> so we go back to Pullman a couple weeks later, and we're not playing well, and he up downs the offense again, and we probably found a way to. Come back and win that one. That's it, you know. Leach, he he'll do some crazy stuff, and then it'll work, and it'll be like his magic trick for the year. You know, he'll be folding chairs up all year now. But that's just Leach. Okay, thanks, yeah. Coach. Awesome. <laughs>